Hi, I'm Alicia and I'm currently studying first grade of bilingual primary education at the University of Murcia in Spain. This is the second part of my exam for the subject School Organization and Diversity, so let's start. We have gone through many research, debates and changes in order to reach what we understand nowadays as attention to diversity. Thus, I feel like it's because of this that it can be extremely difficult for us to imagine a time in which diversity was seen as the result of evil powers or sorcery. It's from the 16th to the 18th century in which improvements are made, especially because of psychiatric naturalism focusing on the bodies, functioning laws. Nonetheless, these measures were just for blind and deaf individuals, such as the invention of Braille. Therefore, we would need to wait until the 19th century for special schools, once institutions for lifelong disabilities had already been created. Special education had nothing to do with ordinary school centers. Thus, I feel like it's necessary to highlight the UNESCO report, which gave a more humanized view of what diversity truly consists of, offering the same opportunities to everyone. Instead of creating distinctions based on pathology, diagnosis or deficit, as human beings should never be referred to as what they have, knowing that we are equal just because of being. It's devastating to see the lack of empathy that has been around for a long time. However, the 20th century brought amazing progress, such as the creation of the unfair. Finally, in 1945, the public law of education granted everyone the same rights by creating special centers for everyone whose rights hadn't been taken into account. People whose deficiencies had been perceived as a reason so that they stayed at home. Furthermore, the first steps towards real integration were taken, and honestly I feel like parents deserve some credits too, as they fought against segregated schools, this resulting in the special classroom being located within the same centers, which is a great improvement in regard to integration, otherwise they would lack the needed social interactions, adaptations and support to proper development. Putting this into a more schematized way, in Spain the LDE can be identified as the beginning of integration. However, as I understand it as a learning process everyone can benefit from, regardless of the limitations and paying attention to their needs instead, I would say that the log set that gave solutions to diversity is the most accurate one. I'm glad to say that nowadays we are aware of the presence of students with diverse functional needs within the classroom, such as ADHD, Down syndrome or autistic spectrum, who deserve a high quality education. As far as I'm concerned, it's been proven through this legislative journey how the necessary measures towards the complete inclusion of students with special educational needs have been established, allowing their adaptation to the ordinary schooling process, advocating for their right inclusion. The Spanish constitution establishes the obligation to design an integration policy for people with physical or sensorial dysfunction. The Royal Decree states that the schools that apply for it can go through an inclusive and integrative experience, both physical and curricular, of special needs students. Then, with 1990s law, integration finally becomes reality, suggesting that these students could achieve the same objectives as the whole student body. Attention to the students will be ruled by the normalization and integration principles, achieving the rights of a high-quality education, along with the identification and evaluation of students' different needs by professionals with different qualifications. Personally, I identified the LOSE from 2002 with progress, as it approaches the specific educational needs with foreigners, social disadvantages, and gifted students. The law follows a similar line, discriminating between the concept of special education needs with a specific educational support needs due to any incapacity or serious behavioral problems. Thus, both social and scholar measures will be taken. For instance, if asked, I would highlight Lomsis 20th article, which includes the student's personalized attention, early diagnosis, the establishment of reinforcement mechanisms towards educational success. Meanwhile, the various articles suggest creating a program with the sole purpose of improving the learning and performance of those students with heavy learning difficulties that haven't risen because of lack of studying or effort. Moreover, it advocates equality both in access and permanency within the educational system, which is truly important to me, especially because of the high amount of school abandonment. Overall, we must be aware of diversity as an intrinsic characteristic of all different human groups, just as it happens happens with the educational world, along with a natural variability that requires high-quality educational attention throughout the whole schooling process. And last but not least, just as I was saying at the beginning of this question, we must take all the measures to respond accurately to this diversity, which must always be perceived as an enrichment tool rather than a factor of inequality. The current situation created by COVID-19 must be faced as an opportunity to learn and develop new strategies, methods and teaching techniques adapted to the beats to our world. 
The LOMSE highlights attention to diversity, individualized attention, preventing learning difficulties, and establishing reinforcement mechanisms, which are now more relevant. The law determines that educational intervention must contemplate as one of its principles the students' diversity, as well as personalized attention, according to their needs. Students with special functional needs, educative needs, gifted students, or those with a late inclusion within the educational system, as well as the ones related to their context. It's essential to take into account the digital divide. Now, and with the schools shut down, the methodologies must be changed, such as the kind of grouping and the activities, the importance of content and objectives, and strategies of evaluation techniques. It's important to modify the teaching learning process and improve active learning, problem-based learning, and flipped classroom by adding new learning methods of collaborative and cooperative learning. The use of digital resources is determined by paying attention to diversity and rich inclusion. These methods allow creating experiences of social software, creating and designing tasks, assess the progress and administer forums, dividing learning in smaller pieces, offering several virtual materials so that students can choose according to their motivation, skills and tastes, foster virtual group activities and interaction between students through virtual meetings to keep a humanized connection, share experiences, tutorials, videos, or educative games. Keep the communication active throughout the day. Interaction and dialogue are necessary. Offer immediate feedback. Create and share a blog. Achieving accessibility to materials and contents through sign language and pictograms with sounds. Easy reading, bigger fonts, resources to change from voice to text, useful adaptations. Furthermore, it's essential to implement the previous materials. Teachers can establish a timetable. From my point of view, the inputs of the new technologies are far from being idyllic. The challenge of knowing how to teach in times of COVID remains, answering to the challenge of paying attention to diversity and developing inclusive processes. I believe I deserve an 8 or a 9 in the whole subject, as I've worked as hard as I've been able to, caring for the activities and trying to dig as far as I could in these questions. However, some of my peers will have managed to fulfill this work better than I've done. Overall, I would highlight the importance of the right of education regardless of personal or cultural conditions, as well as learning problems of disabilities. Then, how essential it is to take students' interests into account, fostering accessibility. I really am, as granting students with a safe environment they can benefit and learn from should be one of our priorities as teachers. I would say that now I have a clear image of what impact the laws have had on the development of attention to diversity and which aspects should be improved.